Uh, hello, hello for Blogging Heads TV. This is Joshua Landis and Osama Minajid to have a debate about Syria. And my name is Joshua Landis. I am the director of the Center for Middle East Studies at the University of Oklahoma College of International Studies. And I write Syria Comment, a blog, a daily blog on Syria matters. Hi, my name. Where are you? I'm, in my, I'm, I'm fine, Josh. Thank you. My name is Osama Minajid. I am a Syrian political activist, and I primarily deal with international relations and foreign policy uh, in the opposition. Uh, Osama, today in this rather short piece, let me start by referencing an article in The Economist today. And the, the, the title is, Can It Get It Together? Syria's Disparate Opposition Must Unite If It Is to Topple the Regime. And then they start with a quote from uh, a Syrian who says, there have been a dozen conferences and statements in several cities, but nothing to show for it, says a protester. Meanwhile, we continue to go out and take the bullets. Well, yes, frankly, yes, of course. Uh, uh, but we have to understand that Syria is not a, a, a indigenous society. It's not one color, one ideology, one um, uh, ethnic group, one, one religious group. Uh, that's why uh, it is taking perhaps longer than Libya when people compare it to Libya and the trans uh, Libya's uh, Transitional Council. Uh, Syria is a multi-ethnic, multi-religious, multi-ideology uh, when it comes to, to, to politics and uh, 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 regionalism is, is also uh, very deep there. So it is going to take uh, a lot uh, of efforts and, and, and time and discussions in order to reach the, the, the best golden formula. That, that, let, that let being said, you, let me ask that you, being let me, said, Josh, yeah, yeah. that being okay. said, a, a, um, uh, things have started now to reach a, a, a very promising, and uh, within a week to ten days' time, we will be announcing a, a national council that is representative of everyone, including the uh, 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 youth movement on the ground, including the, the, the coordinating committees, uh, including the opposition inside Syria and outside Syria. We've been working on this for more than like a, a month now, and uh, uh, hopefully will be announced soon. And why, uh, let me ask you, right why, people, why this right last provisional council that was just announced under the presidency or the, the provisional leadership of uh, Borhan Ghaliyoun, a uh, French professor at the Sorbonne, why was this, the announcement of this meeting, after the Istanbul meeting, uh, the announcement of this government, immediately answered by people like Mohammed uh, uh, Raban, who said, uh, look, they don't represent us in the inside. We, we need to have a military option. They don't want one. We're getting killed here. These are people who, who aren't running the revolution. Why did that happen? I don't know who is the person you're referring to. I never heard of the name. But now, well, for those who, you know, uh, who have been named in the... Uh, uh, Transitional Council, and my name was included among this list, and uh, we were uh, not consulted in the beginning, and, and, and you cannot create a Transitional Council by putting the cart in front of the horse. You have to go through a, a, a process of discussion and, and, and uh, debate on, on a political platform, on the vision, on the objective, and then you reach, a you reach a consensus and you bring everyone on board. I'm sorry, this and is Mohammed Rahal. I, I mispronounced the name. I just wanted to correct myself. Yes. Mohammed Rahal who's the yes. chair, who said he was the chair of the Syrian Revolutionary Councils of the Coordinating Committees. Yeah, uh, uh, again, uh, uh, it's a very, very insignificant minority who are calling for a military operation at the moment. Okay. There's still the vast majority of the uh, Syrian rebels on the ground and also the Syrian opposition are uh, 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 yet uh, 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 sticking by the nonviolent resistance option, and that's... Uh, 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 by by convention, uh, and not only a pragmatic approach, because we believe it is the shortest way to democracy in Syria. It's the shortest way in terms of time, in terms of casualty, in terms of cost associated. So how is the government going to come down? Let's say you do get together your provisional government that's, that's going to happen here. How are you going to bring the government down without a military option? By knocking down the pillars of support of the regime, by knocking down the pillar of a business elite, uh, the Alawite community and the army. But you can't we knock him down. I mean, we, Iraq, we Saddam Hussein, he was killed. Gaddafi, he's not dead yet, but he was being hunted down. Uh, th these dictators don't leave. Um, they s 
they hang on because they know they're going to be dead. And, and but you, you are talking not about a popular uprising taking place uh, uh, when you're referring to these examples. These are a classic examples of, of oppression where no popular uprising was taking place. The dynamics are different. The, uh, but the uprising the in 1990, where the Shiites and the... And the and it's still the, the same. It's still the same. It is not a, 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 a non-violent revolution that is taking place, uh, uh, that is unifying the whole country. Well, Assad also is killing them, but people are not stopping here. Saddam killed them, and there was a blind eye turned on, on the killing of Saddam. But uh, in, in Libya, the NATO went in there and special forces from both MI6 and the CIA and so forth and helped to uh, soften up Qaddafi's forces and lead the way, or helped to lead the way for the rebels to get into Tripoli. Yeah, still. I mean, we are not calling for military intervention. We're not calling for... Uh, 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 foreign uh, agencies to to uh, 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 interfere here because it, there is no appetite for it anyway in the first place, and we know it is an extremely complicated scenario when it comes to Lib uh, to Syria, unlike Libya, where there is a vast uh, you know desert, a huge desert, and also uh, 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 geopolitically, it's a completely different scenario. So you think the military is going to stop shooting? Is that what you think? You think they're going to put their arms down? They're going to reach a critical point? There is a tipping point. Okay. Now, regardless of where, where is this tipping point and when and how we would reach it, but there is a tipping point, certainly, where these you know, army chiefs, who are human beings at the end of the day, uh, uh, would um, calculate and assess risks. Risk of associating themselves with Assad or risk of, of losing uh, everything they've gained. Now, this is the uh, uh, way forward, is to create a wedge between these pillars of support and the regime. Number one is the, 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 uh, the weakest, which is the Sunni uh, business elite. Uh, we are going to t t go into tailor messages and also ask the international community to talk to them directly and say, you do not want to be associated with a, 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 a regime that is killing its own people. You do not want to be associated with the mafia-style businesses. You do not want to be tried in court later as supporters of the Assad regime. There is, uh, uh, this is the, the, the threatening uh, uh, side, and also a promise that there is a, a huge potential for you uh, uh, in future Syria, a prosperous Syria, in a free democratic Syria where there is a, a free competition laws, an open market economy, and you can uh, uh, prosper and, and play a vital role in the development of the country. So our message should be to the uh, 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 military is, uh, uh, you do not want also to be associated with killers. You do, you do not have an excuse that you are only following orders. You will be tried in court. Well, that's just the point, though. Like there, are, there are going to be a lot of people tried in court. We know no, unless, and and we will tell them. We will tell them. You will be tried in court, and you will be persecuted no matter what. And these uh, 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 kind of persecution do not uh, uh, just fade away. Uh, we have Serbia now, a very, very current example. Unless you make a historic move and you associate yourself with the people and not with the regime, you have sworn to protect the land, the people, and the border, and not to protect a, a family. Okay, a Assam, family is killing let me ask you this. Let's say this scenario doesn't unfold the way you've predicted, that the government doesn't collapse all of a sudden like some building and an earthquake. And, and they stick in, they're willing to fight. When do you make the calculation that you've got to move? I mean, how, what do you tell people on the ground who is saying, we're getting killed here, we've got to do something. You say, give us three more months, four months, how much, how much, what's the time you're talking about here? You know, you would never find anyone to tell you time. This the timing question is a one billion dollar question. Uh, no one would be able to tell you uh, when Gaddafi was expected to fall. No one even believed that he's going to fall so soon, even before the end sure. of Ramadan. Uh, and. Uh, uh, where we still have a, a unclear situation in Yemen, where people are expected Yemen to be sometime uh, uh, earlier. So th these revolutions are not, they, you cannot just apply the same model on, on Syria that you applied on Libya or you apply in Yemen. It's a very, very different scenario in each case, and it's a case by case. So he, uh, we could be seeing the same situation in a year's time, is what you're saying. No, it's, it's certainly, I, I hope it's not a year's time, but I cannot also tell you it's a one month, one week, or, or, or day X or, or, or week Y. Is, it, uh, is there uh, any tipping point where you would say, look, if we need a, a military option, we need foreign intervention, we need to change this around? Um, is there a point in number of deaths and number of time or anything like that, or you just go on forever? Unless everyone in the streets chanting and asking for military intervention, unless there's a consensus amongst the opposition inside the country and outside, 
unless there is an appetite in, it, uh, in the stomach of every Syrian that they, this, you know, they really need for this and they really ask him for it, uh, we cannot start a debate or discussion about it. Uh, and, uh, and we have to be very clear. But those, we, those voices even, have even, been even, even those on the street, uh, Josh, yeah. believe they are able to knock down Assad. And we are hopeful that we can do this. With the squeeze now of the economy, we're now with, the, with the embargo on the oil exports, with the embargo on, on diesel imports, uh, 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 with uh, later what we're working on is sanctions on trade. Uh, all these are squeeze Assad. They will be left with no money. And they'll be left with only a killing machine that is even, even uh, 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 paralyzed because they cannot move. Only, those sanctions sending their thugs, only sending their thugs to kill people and more women and more children. Okay. Then what? Okay, but the, the, the sanctions get kicked down. The rich and the powerful in the country will pass them down to the poor and the weak. The government will have to cut subsidies and stop subsidizing bread and oil and rice and fuel and all the things. It spends uh, about 7 or $8 billion a year on subsidies. It'll cut those. The, that's going to be the weakest people in this society begin to feel the pinch first, and you know, they go hungry. Uh, now, theoretically, that's going to drive them out of the streets to join the revolution, if they haven't done so already. But, uh, but it might not. It might just create refugees that go to foreign countries like we saw in Iraq. And, uh, no, if, you, if you're talking about unpaid sanctions, that would be the case, yes. But if you are targeting $78 million a day that, is, that goes to the pockets of the region, that distributes it in, uh, even outside the Ministry of, of, of Finance in, in, in a certain way, uh, and the, the uh, allocated funds gets appropriated to the uh, Ministry of Defense and Ministry of Interior, basically to the uh, security forces, to pay these thugs and, 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 and mercenaries to kill people, yes, uh, uh, it is effective. How, I mean, all Syria's uh, um, uh, uh, army vehicles are, operate on diesel fuel. All, all the uh, uh, missile launchers, the uh, 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 soldiers' carriers, the, the tanks, uh, even the buses of, of transportation of those uh, 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 security forces, they all operate in diesel. And Syria imports half of its diesel needs from abroad. So if you cut this off, and you even uh, 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 cut the uh, exports that would allow them to import such diesel from even different countries, not, not Europe or U.S., then they are in a big, big trouble. Uh, yes, it, they will have to weigh now two options, whether to uh, uh, decrease their subsidies or uh, you know, uh, 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 minimize their operations, uh, the military and security operations. And I don't, I don't think they will, what do you they think will have do? to weigh. They will have to weigh their options, I and mean, they may do it 50-50, but they have to weigh their, their options very carefully. Well, because I, I they don't want, they they don't want the remember, remember when, they, when they put the diesel uh, subsidies, uh, uh, decreased it a bit, uh, and it went up to 20 Australian pounds yes. uh, rather than uh, 60. People went crazy. People were very unhappy. Uh, they, very unhappy, and, 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 and they, they put it back straight away to, to 13 or, or 15 Australian pounds because they are very sensitive to the, uh, to the reaction. And, and this is what we are planning to do, not only on, on, the, on, the, on the diesel or on the oil uh, side, but also sure. on the commerce and, and trade. Sure, Syria right. is business... its way out of the revolution, and, and, like Saudi Arabia. And, it's, it's, of course, it doesn't have the kind of finances to buy its way out of this. It, it's, the people are poor. And uh, uh, certainly, uh, you know, business elites are, are um, you know, the on, only concern is wealth. And if their wealth started to, degree, to decrease, Significantly, day after day, they will say, "I mean, we're sorry. We have to drop the ball here, ball here and we cannot bail you anymore." Let me let me ask you a question proven. about a larger question about Syria and political community in Syria. You know, Syria got into this problem that it's in today: military dictatorship. Way back in 1949, and that was because the Sunni Syrians were incapable of governing together. They couldn't come together as a unit. We saw an analogous situation in Syria in 1948, right after the Pal war in Palestine, when Syria failed. And all the political parties came out of the streets and were demonstrating and demanding a, a change of government, and that the President Kowatli stepped down. President Kowatli, instead of forming a government of national unity and calling on the different political parties to join him in a new government, what he did is he called emergency rule he put the military on the street. Hosni Zayim was the chief of staff, and he told them to bust heads, arrest people, and smash the demonstrators. He tried to use a military solution to solve a political problem. What happened? Within three months, the military had taken over on their own, once they realized they could rule. And Syria has been 
almost always under a military dictatorship ever since then. And that was because the Sunnis, who had political power, when the French left and dominated Parliament, distrusted each other. Kowatli distrusted the opposition parties, mostly the Aleppo and People's Party, and he called them traitors, and he refused to bring them into government. Instead, he built a government, a small government of Damascenes that didn't please the people. How, and that, that spoke to the failure of national community, that there was no nation in Syria. That's, of course, way back in 1949, 1950. Today, now, I, now, don't you think this is all changed now when you have... That's what I'm going to ask you. I mean, that's what I'm going to ask in the name you. of Homs, people from Jablis trans chanting in the name of Aleppo, people from Aleppo chanting in the name of Deir Zor, people in Deir Zor chanting in the name of Latakia. But the national, but limit, the the national identity the now. Streets, the wealthy no, it's, it's not true. It's not true. Well, why it's are you waiting true. for the wealthy merchants to defect from the regime? The Damascus is not on the street, Josh. I mean, every single day you have you witness one of the most critical moments in this whole uprising. Only a few days ago, when uh, Damascene took uh, all to the streets of uh, uh, Damascus near Kafar uh, 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 Square, the regime was extremely on the edge. But it was a very, you very need, tipping. You need no, the we Damascene weapons to come out further, and you need the wealthy people to defect. That's why you've asked for the sanctions. The sanctions are in order to force those people to defect. The military. The Sunnis, most of the military is Sunni. They are fighting with the Alawites to oppress the people, as you call it. And and you're waiting for this critical tipping point when that's yeah, going to I mean, we have to understand how, I mean, we, we, the majority of the army is Sunni, of course, in terms of privates, in terms of yes. soldiers, but these awesome. do not matter. Okay. Of course, it's, it's, it's the officers. All the officers, we, we, we both know what's the vetting process of getting an officer promoted to a certain position in the Syrian army. Okay. They have to show an extreme loyalty to the Assad. Assad, the, you know, the, the image, Assad, the, the name, Assad, the character, Assad, the god, uh, 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 rather than anything else. And we know how, how the structure of this, uh, the, the army officers in Syria are mostly predominantly uh, uh, otherwise. So you're gambling uh, that people are not going to be loyal to this structure. That the even the Alawite themselves, because I want a message to the Alawite community. I mean, we want you to play a role in the transitional period. We want you to play a role in future Syria. We are not, our fight in Syria is not against a sect, it's not against a minority. It is against a family that even holding the whole Alawite community hostage. And this is our message to them. Do not be fooled by Assad's uh, 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 politics of fear that you'll be persecuted and you'll be killed and you'll be hanged, and this never happened in the past. Okay. Uh, do not, but do the Kurds haven't joined in. The Alawites, of course, are, are, are sticking the Alawites. Again, you know, these, are these, are, the regime, Josh, the these, these are myths. The Kurds are not joining. The Kurds, all political parties, Kurdish political parties, issued statements. All their members are in the streets. We have demonstrations they refuse in to Kurdish go to the areas Istanbul every day. Sorry? They refused to go to the Istanbul meeting a few weeks ago. Well, does that mean, I mean, Istanbul meeting, because they, they, that, that means they, they have political you know, differences? Does that mean that they're this not joining the Arabs Does it mean they're not, not does it mean, no, no, of course not. It's one of the even uh, organizers of the Istanbul meeting, Josh, is a Kurdish person. Okay. Uh, if you go through the names of the National Council of the announced soon, you'll find they are overrepresented. Okay. The Alawites are overrepresented. The Christians are overrepresented. Because we're very careful in this. Because we're very, taking this very, very seriously. Okay, uh, now the skeptics, the skeptics are going to say, look, it, the Levant is different. Iraq, civil war. Lebanon, emulous factions, civil war. The Palestinians, even they're all Sunnis, mostly Sunnis, and they can't get together. There's Christian, there's, there's Islamic parties, Hamas, against the PLO, the seculars. It's pathetic. That's what they're going to say. The, the skeptics say, this is, this is, these are not nations. These okay, are so the, tribes so... with flags. That's the standard line. The answer is to uh, support dictatorship, support the killing of people, and let it go. And uh, just let uh, uh, a few more hundreds of thousands get killed, because uh, this is our notion, and this is our perception of the, of the uh, nations in the Middle East. Or but how Iraq. do you convince people that Syria is going to be different? Syria is not Iraq, Lebanon, Palestinians. But well, Syria number one, is going to number one, the Josh. And point the way towards real national community. The number one, Josh, Syria is... Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, mosaic is completely different. We don't have a very close percentages uh, with the ethnic groups and religious groups. It's a predominantly Arab Sunnis. It's not unlike it's unlike Iraq, where you have a very close percentage between uh, you know distribution of 
of, of the population amongst the Shia, the, the, the Sunnis, and the Kurds. It's unlike the 18 different sects and religions in, 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 in Lebanon. Uh, Syria is predominantly Arab Sunnis, and you have few smaller minorities. Okay. Now, uh, th there is a, a, a theme, there is an, a, a, an identity to the country that we, no one you know, should always you know, fight about, like, like Iraq or, or Lebanon. Even in, 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 in Palestine, where you refer to the example, you have two, kind of two, two polars there, two poles, and, and every side is pushing uh, or pulling towards uh, uh, one side or the other. Uh, in Syria, it's a predominantly uh, Arab Sunnis, and the end, you, then you have the, the uh, Alawite minority, the Ismailis, you have the Kurds, you have the Christians, uh, and others. But those do not even come close to the majority, no, they don't. Majority, chance, even all of them together. Yes. So this is a very, very significant difference. Okay, so the Sunnis will stand together, and this is why I asked this story about the Sunnis failing in 1949, and you're saying that Syria has built a national community. Is it an Arab Syria or is it Syria to go? Is it, is it a Syrian identity or is it really an Arab Syrian identity? No, I think it's, it's a Syrian identity, especially that now uh, it's very common to hear the Azadi words, which is word mean, means freedom in, in Kurdish, in, in the mosques of Damascus and Aleppo. It's very common to see uh, uh, the coordinating committees in the Kurdish areas are uh, consist of Arabs and Kurds together in a, in a town or in a city like Homs, where sectarian tension is at most right now, you have third of the coordinating committee uh, are Sunnis, third are Christians, and third are Alawite. And the, and the Muslim so Brotherhood and so forth are fine with that, to get, get rid of Arab and to just have Syria as a Syrian nation, just like the Iraqis did with an Iraqi nation and no longer... How would, they, how would they influence otherwise? Well, they can say they want to be Arab. Arab. They say it's an Arab country, it's going to be an Arab let them think. Let them think whatever they want to think. It is not the largest or the most, you know, the strongest uh, political party in Syria. Okay. And we have to understand this. It is unlike Egypt. The, there is not a single member of the Muslim Brotherhood inside the country. I mean, with all due respect to every fraction and the whole opposition, but they're only one part of it. Right. And no one is able to label the whole country with their views and their ideology. Okay. And... Uh, a lot of people say, oh, Turkey has been hosting all these meetings and they've been boosting up, giving special little little uh, extra push to the Muslim Brotherhood and stuff. That's not true. No, absolutely not true. I mean, they're pushing everyone together to, okay. and to sit and talk and uh, so uh, what's the next to step? come to a consensus. To come to a next conclusion is, here, what's yeah, the next, next step? step? is announcing a national council yeah. as a representative of, of all the different fractions and backgrounds in the country, all ethnic groups and all political parties. Uh, we'll get the approval of, uh, of the coordinating committees on the ground, and they'll be part of it. Uh, uh, it will include uh, members of the opposition, you know, uh, senior and significant members of the opposition inside the country. And uh, we will form um, offices and create a parallel diplomatic structure for the regime structure. Like we have representation in Washington, in London, in, in, in Brussels, in, in, in Cairo, in the Gulf states, in, in, in Turkey, uh, and so on and so forth. And uh, uh, the lobbying efforts would take different, different trends. Not what do you want from the Western world? What do you want from the United States and from London and Paris? Uh, uh, not only, you know, uh, keep consistent with the message. Keep consistent with the message. Now develop your own messages to these three different communities uh, or, or, or constituencies. The army, Syrian army, yeah. the Alawite community, and the business elite. Uh, and the same message as I said. Uh, their messages should be uh, to encourage the Alawite uh, to give up their support to Assad, or whoever left supporting Assad, to give up their support to Assad, and not to fall in this uh, fear agenda of Assad, and it's only uh, a tool that Assad is using, and just try to convince them that you, you really uh, are with the Syrians now in this together, uh, against a, a, a dictatorship family. Uh, uh, and you will have a, 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 uh, your rights uh, uh, instated in the Constitution and guaranteed in the, in the laws of Syria in the future. And also they should uh, uh, develop their message and keep a hammer on it uh, to the uh, Syrian army that uh, uh, there is a chance for you to take a historic move and to save yourselves from persecution later by not associating yourselves with the Assad and by making the right move, uh, a right historic move. And also a message to the Sunni uh, business elite that you, uh, 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 you have a huge future and potential, uh, potential in, in, in future Syria. Uh, do not associate yourselves. Uh, with killers, uh, do not you let your whole wealth just vanish because you'll be persecuted and arrested uh, under the charges of, of financing uh, 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 murder and, and, and crimes. And uh, if you took the right choices, people will always uh, 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 remember this for you. Well, Assam and Ajit, um, it's been a pleasure talking with you. And uh, thank
thanks to Blogging Heads for sponsoring this. And um, hopefully Syria will have a soft landing and get beyond this. We hope so, Josh. I mean, we all know uh, freedom is priceless, but has a cost, and Syrians are prepared to pay it. Well, thank you very much, Osama. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Josh. Take care. Bye-bye.